That's the feeling we've all had. Now new shoes would make you glad, but the best time you recall when you wore no shoes at all. Back the day. This is a wall for another building that's going, like an, this would be the interior of the wall eventually, is that right? Yeah, so, so this is my house here on my right, or on, on your left, um, and eventually I want to have another, like a little rental house that's sort of adjoining my house. Um, and like, one thing that we like to do at Dancing Rabbit is we're encouraging density so that people live closer together, um, so that it's easier to to converse with your neighbor, to see your neighbor. Um, and also when things are dense, you, you can share walls, which is a very energy efficient way to build. Because if you have two houses and they have one side that's connected, that's one side of, your, of each house that doesn't want to lose the heat to the outside. You're just essentially like helping heat your neighbor's house. Mm -hmm. and, and hopefully they're helping heat your house also. Um, and so we've got this shared wall and uh, but I haven't started building this house yet um, at all and I'm not sure when I will get to it. We've started like excavating the top soil to put on that roof but um, that's the extent of the foundation work and so I wanted to put a wall here that would be interesting for the, the future home but also be resilient against the elements in the meantime before this house was built. And um, I'm a big fan of bricks and masonry work. And um, I like seeing all the old brick buildings that are in the area. Um, bricks have historically been a really popular way to build here just because of the, the clay that we have. Um, and so I have just sort of collected old bricks from wherever I've been able to find them. And I call this the, the wall of 100 houses because mm -hmm. it has it might not have a hundred houses, but it has a bunch of houses that that are represented here. And um, yeah, so I mean, the one thing about masonry work is that you always want to give it a really solid foundation. So we've got a concrete footer that has a lot of drainage uh, beneath it, so that the ground doesn't want to move, and and the the strong concrete will keep the wall together in in the event that a little part of the ground does settle one way or the other. Um, and it's mostly a cosmetic wall, and so it's not really structural. It supports this beam up here, this little barn beam, which will actually be a, a bookshelf. Like, the wall will continue to go up when this building is constructed, mm. but there will be essentially a long bookshelf on top of this beam. So it has to support its own weight, it has to support the books, but that's about it. Um, and so we were able to take a lot of liberties with it that we couldn't have if we wanted to build a load-bearing three-story building. Right. Um, and so as you can see, it's not like the straightest of walls. <laughs> we did not use uh, conventional like you know, techniques of, of lining up the plum with a string and, right. and, and all that. Um, but it's, I think, very visually mm. interesting, and I'm a fan of flowing weird wonky shapes yeah it's so, really eye-catching and cool I, I think it's great yeah so i'm pleased with how it turned out we have this little thing here which was inspired by uh if you ever walk down old uh brick uh neighborhoods like for example in st louis there's a bunch um you'll have like old windows or fireplaces or arches that have been bricked over over time and so this was sort of inspired by that to, to look like it could have used to have been a fireplace um, and you've got the hearth on top of it, or the whole the whole thing is the hearth. And um, 
So what did you use for mortar there? Is that just cob or Yeah, something? so um, because this will be an interior wall someday, um, again, we were able to take a liberty of using earthen mortar instead of the conventional Portland lime mortar. Um, and yeah, so it's actually a very similar mix to what we had been using for plaster on the front of the house. It's um, t basically two parts sand, one part clay. We didn't put any fiber additives in it, into it because it doesn't need to like hold, it, it needs less tensile strength than the plaster does. Mm -hmm. um, it's mainly gravity that's just holding it all together. Going back to the, like, the earthen plaster things we were talking about where the clay will erode over time if it has the elements hitting against it. Um, but if this is an interior wall, then it's not gonna be subject to those violent forces. Um, and so in the meantime, we've just put this little temporary overhang on it, which I'm hoping is adequate enough for the next three or four years until this building is built. I may have to continue to tuck point the lower part of it a little bit if it starts to erode. But um, Yeah, it's east facing, so it should get the least amount of weather on it. Yeah, it's yeah. east facing, and we have mostly westerly winds, and it's a pretty short wall, and it's got a decent overhang, so... Um, and then we also did oil it, so it will it'll help. The oil helps it look a lot better, just because it um, brings out the colors a lot more, and it also just makes everything a lot more resilient to the well to the weather and the rain. Another benefit of using the earthen mortar instead of the Portland lime is just it's much more forgiving. There's not a chemical reaction with clay; it just shrinks and locks together. Whereas Portland on Lime, when you when you use those, you know, you've got a window of maybe an hour or three, maybe maybe two hours that it's workable. And after that, it starts to set up pretty fast. And once it's set, uh, you hope you, you better hope you got it right the first time because you can't you can't just add water and change it like how you can with clay. So there were a couple courses that I laid and then I was like, nah, that doesn't really that doesn't quite work with how I wanted it to look. And so I was able to just like tear out some bricks and redo it. And so that was a lot of fun. Yeah. And also like we didn't have to wear gloves or um, like trowel. I, I just used my hand. And so it was a lot more enjoyable yeah. than using Portland line. Maybe one other interesting point is just like this, this old barn beam. Um, this actually came from the Gnome Gnome Warren uh, from when I first moved to Dancing Rabbit six years ago. It was just sitting around in the grass pretty much right behind where we're standing and <laughs> I just held on to it for it was just sitting in the weeds for a long time and I never knew what I was gonna use it for but I'm happy I kept it because it's it's white oak and so it's it's pretty um, up. <laughs> it's long lasting it's very rot resistant and you can tell it's really old but I I cut into that with a chainsaw and let me tell you it is still uh, pretty pretty structurally sound pretty hard inside so, yeah. here because you can see um, a lot of this is the original cob material and some of the stuff I'm not sure how well you can get it with the camera but a lot of it um, has stayed like pretty pretty protected by the overhang and like not a lot of the elements have hit it mm -hmm. but then in other spots like if you get over into here you can see that a lot of the clay has washed away over time leaving more of the sand and the straw exposed and so essentially it's just it's a 